Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Hey, Faith Positive Nation, Dr. Joey here with another amazing episode of Faith Positive Radio where we talk about faith and work and and how you are Christ in the workplace. I don't know about you, but in my own personal spiritual journey, one of the most challenging parts for me is to forgive other people of stuff, you know, life stuff. Things that they did, things they didn't do, things they said, things they should have said but didn't. <laughs> yeah, I can keep going with the whole laundry list, right? Well, anyway, forgiveness then becomes um, a real stumbling block, I think, to our spiritual growth and our intimacy with the Father in helping us be our best selves in the image of Christ. How do you forgive someone? I mean, we know Jesus said, pray for your enemies and forgive those who spitefully use you and things like that. That falls under the category of easier said than done, right? How do you do that? How do you forgive someone, uh, especially somebody who will never ask you for forgiveness, right? Hey, my guest today has a great story. It's going to inspire you, encourage you, and help you move forward in how you forgive people, whether it's somebody at work or somebody in your own family or a friend or a neighbor or somebody. So Faith Positive Nation, help me welcome the amazing, because he's got a rock star guitar on his wall. If you're just listening to this, go to YouTube and check it out, because the dude's got <laughs> red walls and a guitar hanging on the wall. So we are rocking this episode of Faith Positive Radio with my new best friend, Derek Stone. Derek, welcome to Faith Positive Radio, brother. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. Okay, I got to ask. I got to ask, what kind of music do you play? Because you live in Nashville, and there's all I kinds do. of music in Nashville. <laughs> there is. It, was, uh, it, was, it started as worship praise and worship. Uh And then it went into, um, Christian rock. Uh And that's where it kind of moved into a little bit of, of, I was trying to cross over kind of at the end there where it was kind of more just kind of positive rock, uh, secular rock. Uh And so, um, so yeah, it was just kind of all that. I'm, I'm a big, big rock fan. So yeah, rock and roll. And you play lead guitar. (laughs) I I play, I play rhythm guitar most of the time and uh, lead singer. So I was lead singer and rhythm guitar player. And you look so handsome and you sing lead. That's, That's just right. wrong. I don't even like you. <laughs> I, I like classic, you classic, classic front man. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. That's great, right. man. So let's talk about forgiveness. And, and sometimes we want to talk about forgiveness. Sometimes we don't. Um, typically, Derek, I want to talk about you forgiving me. But I'm not so <laughs> sure that I want to talk about me forgiving you. I mean, isn't that the way it slices? It is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it so. Is. So tell us your story about forgiveness and the need to forgive and what it's done for you in terms of your own work and spiritual growth. Sure. So uh, when my business did over a million dollars in revenue, I'm a general contractor here in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, got out of the music business in 2014. And uh, when, it, when my business, I was so grateful that I kept going mm-hmm. back to my life to see what it was that triggered my journey to success. And honestly, all the roads kept pointing back to uh, – the decision, the one, the one choice I made to forgive my dad. Um, and what was happening was I was at a uh, stomping out the darkness conference by, uh, uh, Dave Park and Neil Anderson. Dave Park was putting it on a bunch of churches came together in Tupelo, Mississippi and put it together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, during one of the sessions, he said, um, he said, you know, some of you guys need to forgive a sibling or a parent or uh, an aunt or an uncle or a, or a grandparent. And, mm-hmm. uh, my heart started to race and, and, and mm. my fence, my fist started to clinch up and I almost walked out of the yeah, conference. You were looking for the nearest exit, right? <laughs> I was, I was. And then, um, this voice came to me audibly and I've only heard this voice three times audibly in my life. Um, oh. one time was when I met my spouse, my wife, mm. and he says, there she is, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> got your attention, did he? <laughs> yeah. And, um, when I moved from Mobile, Alabama to Baldwin, Mississippi, three weeks before school started, um, this voice came to me again saying that um, this is a new start for you. You don't need to screw this up. Mm-hmm. And so um, so this voice, I was at this conference, and this voice had, it came to me and said, Derek, I want to use you, but I can't because you have all this bitterness towards your dad. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I, I immediately answered with that question of my book, why should I forgive? It's the name of my book, mm. which is, it comes from a place of, of, of discontent and anger really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was because I felt like it was my dad's place in life to protect me from all the bad things that happened to me as a child. Like I was sexually abused from eight to 12. Mm. Um, and, and, um, you know, we, we had to take cold showers sometimes because the lights got cut off and in candlelight and never knew where the next meal was coming from. And, and so mm. it was all these things that had happened. I, you know, the one person I found to blame and, and maybe this was the enemy, I'm not sure, but it was just my dad for not being there. Cause I felt like it was his job. Mm. And so, um, so then when I asked that question, that voice came back to me as if I just not, as if I didn't just holler at it <laughs> and said, uh, and said um, I understand. just calm, collected voice just said, but I'm the father to the fatherless. And, uh, Oh man, hang on a second. I got to soak in that. Say it again. Says I'm the father to the fatherless. Cause you felt like an orphan, didn't you, man? Mm-hmm. Mm. For sure. Mm. And, um, mm. I wanted to know what it was like so bad for somebody to tell me that I had what it took and that I was enough. Um, that I said, God, you know, if you'll give me that, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll, I'll forgive him. Mm. And so two hours on my knees crying and, and, and mm. broken. Um, mm. This is a sobbing kind of cry. This isn't no, you know, yeah, this is not a manly so, cry. This is not, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is a down on the dirt. Down in the cry. dirt, anguish yeah. kind of cry, and Man. forgiving all the people that had wronged me. It wasn't it just wasn't my dad. It was it was my abuser, and and you know, um, and 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 all the people that I was just coming to my heart and coming to my mind, mm. and um, mm. just forgiving all those people. And what was crazy? The craziest thing happened mm. is that when I stood up, mm-hmm. I no longer felt the need to live behind this facade that I'd put up the facade mm. that everything's good, everything's gravy, let's go for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everything's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, um, and at this point I didn't have to live behind the facade because everything was awesome. It was like, uh, you know, I didn't feel the weight of the burden anymore. Mm. And that was, and that was the biggest transition for me was like just the freedom I felt of not hearing it, carrying around the burden. Mm. Yeah. John Eldridge would say, uh, you're afraid of being discovered as a poser. Right. Poser, absolutely. Yeah, to yeah, because there you are. And we men are really good at this, by the way. We we excel. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we don't want anybody to see the chinks in our armor, right? Right. The poser, the right. poser, the one upper. That's you know, right, man. Especially know. in the church, you know, mm-hmm. we, we we got to be manly men for for Christ, right? Right. But, right. Um, man, it's painful. So it took the voice of God to get you to forgive these people who were not asking for forgiveness though. I mean, absolutely. Had they had, had your abuser, your father, any of these other people asked for forgiveness? No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, the abuser did, um, you know, and, 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 and that kind of thing later, uh, but subsequent to this. Yeah. And what was happening, what was happening too, was that the, my, my dad, that day that I, I got to pray, my prayer became, would you, God, would you restore the relationship with my dad? And, mm. um, you know, the book talks about the waiting room and in the waiting room, I was waiting for six years for that to happen and praying wow. that it would happen. I've reached out about several times and mm-hmm. one day I'm in the middle of the deer woods and it's full blown hunting season in, in Mississippi and I'm on top of my best hill and uh-huh. Deer everywhere, but in my scope, you know. <laughs> so, I understand. So, Been there, done uh, everywhere, that. but where I need them, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> and so um, while I'm coming out of the woods, and my phone rings, and and I slow the four wheeler down to get the phone out, and didn't know who it was, and said my dad, and I was uh-huh. like, man, he only calls when it's my birthday or when somebody's dying or, or in the hospital on his side of the family, and wow. um, it wasn't my birthday, uh-huh. so uh, so Did I was racing myself for some news, you know, and yeah. He, uh, he answered the phone and says, Hey, Derek, how's it going? And he was real excited. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so I was like, well, this is a different kind of phone call. And he goes, Hey, do you got a second to talk? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And he said, he said, listen, I've been doing some thinking and I don't want to be known as somebody who walked out on their kids. And, hmm. um, I, I want to be in your life and in my grandkids life. And, um, I just want to ask if you'll, if you'll forgive me for the way that I've treated you guys for the, the past 10 years. And, um, Right my heart there just, I was so excited on the right there in the middle of the woods on the phone, man. I mean, it was just, <laughs> oh, Hey, where it happens, dude. it happens. That's it, man. And, um, and so I, I said, dad, I forgave you a long time ago, but I've been praying for this day for a long time. 
And that next month we went to Thanksgiving in Texas, you know, and, and just started rebuilding that relationship. We've been, we've been on hunting trips together, went to waterfalls and hung mm. out. He's a blacksmith. So he does, you know, mm. just this kind of dude. He's just one of these just dudes, man, you know? Uh-huh, so, uh-huh, um, uh-huh. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting. Um, and how that's been, how it's really been awesome going through that process too. Oh, I bet it has been, but I bet there've been some ups and downs to restoring that relationship too. Cause it's not like dehydrated relationship. You just add water and boom, there you got it. Right. <laughs> you got to work at it, man. It's hard work. Yeah. I mean, you try to, you try to plan things where you can hang out and really build. Mm-hmm. And it, what's crazy um, is how much you really, how much alike we really are. We don't know why we do some of the things we do, but when you go hang out with your dad, you're kind of like, dang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy, you know? And so, um, <laughs> oh, it's crazy on the other end too, when you're the dad watching your child do some stuff that you do. Go, yeah. Why'd you have to pick that to do like I do? <laughs> For, <laughs> right? sure. For yeah. sure. Dang. I mean, you've got two yeah. boys. I know you That's see right. it in them. For so sure. Be more like your mama in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. For sure. Wow. So you guys just uh, created some experiences together where you could just hang out yeah. and see what God had in store for you. What would you say to somebody, Derek? Derek Stone is the author of um, a book why about should I forgive? forgiveness. Yeah. Why should I forgive? And um, one of the hardest things that Christ ever asked us to do is to forgive somebody that hurt us um, and, and just not fessing up to it. Right. And it doesn't mm-hmm. come and ask for forgiveness. So what would you say to someone in faith positive nation right now? You know, somebody's commuting to work or walking the dog or something. Um, no, you don't walk cats, but I mean, walking the dog and, uh, and, and they're thinking to themselves, well, I'm just not sure. I mm-hmm. am just not sure I can forgive insert name here who, mm-hmm. who did this to me. What mm-hmm. would you say to that person, Derek? I would say that um, it's terrible what happened to you. Mm. It's terrible what they did to you. Mm. Um, It's not right. Mm. And by no means do we want to justify it. Mm. But if you want to move on to a better place emotionally, you have to get over it because it's, it's more about you in this situation. Forgiveness is for you. Trust is for them. So say that again now. Forgiveness is for you. What is Trust that? is about them. Yeah. What is forgiveness is about you? What does that mean? Forgiveness is about you letting go when, and sometimes it's mourning. You have to mourn. Mm. So, in, so if you think about Jesus, okay. So mm-hmm. when, when God, this is how I see our relationship with the father, right? So right. when God looks at us, he sees Jesus on the cross. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's a very, very mental image that yeah, thank that's God just how I, I, I see it. And so <laughs> in order for something to be forgiven, true forgiveness to happen, something has to die. Right. And we see that mm-hmm. with the example that Jesus set. Mm-hmm. And, and when you take that into perspective a little bit about forgiveness, when it's sometimes you have to mourn, something has to die. And sometimes that's the thought of a relationship. Mm hmm. The thought mm, of mm, mm. of your innocence. What would you still be like if you had your innocence? Yeah. Or you know, what the thought of what could what, what could have been, could have been exactly. Yeah. What, what what could this relationship have been like? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and what could this marriage have been like? Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and 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 the fact that you have to mourn that sometimes sometimes too. I've had a couple of friends of mine that are just like their dads have been have been just really awful figures and mm. still continue to be. And mm-hmm. to that person, you'd say, look, you've, you've got to mourn what you thought that relationship could have been. Mm-hmm. And then you have to set boundaries in your life to protect your family and yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, to keep it from happening, continue happening. to happen. Yeah. 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 You know, or like a boss at work. Um, I, I know one of the hardest people for me ever to, to forgive was a boss back when I was in radio broadcasting, a boss who fired me two weeks after I got married. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I literally came back from the honeymoon, worked a week and she got drunk on a Saturday morning and and fired me. Um, that was tough, really tough. So, I mean, it happens at work too, when we Mm -hmm. feel like something we didn't deserve. Now, I mean, I own part of the relationship, right? My part. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, 
I hear you, man. You got to mourn what could have been because mm-hmm. it could have been a great relationship, whether it's family or business. Right. And, right. Um, so that's, yeah. that's that first step to mourn what could have been. And then if you're continuing in that relationship to set some boundaries to keep the injuries from continuing to happen. Absolutely. All right. What's because our parents, thing? our parents, sometimes our parents are sometimes the best example of what not to be. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's terrible to say that. No, it's absolutely. terrible to say that, but it I is. It. It's true. It's, it's true. Sometimes, true. sometimes your parents are the best example of not what not to be, right. and right. and that's okay. What you got to do, what you got to do is you got to go find people's lives who you 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 admire, mm. and then go 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 model their life. You know, okay. go go see what they're doing. Who, what kind of people are they hanging around? You know, uh, what kind of relationships are they in? Okay, so and, my third and, thing and model is to that. find uh, someone who's doing what I wish my parent, my boss, my friend was doing mm-hmm. with life and, and learn from them because we caught the negative lesson, right? Right. Right. So let's go find a positive one. That's a great right. thing to do. That's awesome, yeah. man. So, so, so where do so, I go to find those? Well, you know, sometimes it's just looking around in your community. A lot of your community leaders are those types of people, your church mm-hmm. leaders. A lot of times, uh, a lot of your church leaders are those kind of people. Um, mm-hmm. I would say, um, don't be naive. Yeah. And keep keep yeah. your keep your guard up a little bit. But yeah, they're human but too, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And so, and that's the that's really the thing. Um, but but I, I had a, some great, and that's what uh, the amazing thing that happened was that God put five guys in my life after I forgave my dad. Mm. And when I say, God, if you'll give me that, I'll give you this. And sure enough, he did. I was inserted <laughs> in the five families lives, man, that really? I saw what these men were like, their work ethic, how they treated their spouse, how they resolved mm. conflict with their spouse, how they disciplined their kids, how they were contributing men to society and in a church member. I mean, mm-hmm. all these things that you just wouldn't see unless you were right underneath them as a kid. Oh, and it was gotcha. just amazing to see. Wow. Um, and so those were the things that I said, oh, these are the different examples that, mm. that, that mm-hmm. have happened. So yeah, mm. it was really neat. That's awesome. You know, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit will put you into relationships with other people mm-hmm. that fill that gap, mm-hmm. right? That, for that, sure. For what could have been or to provide that positive role model that mm-hmm. you need uh, to claim your own paradigm of fatherhood, right? For sure. So why I should forgive, um, what is forgiveness? You say forgiveness is for you. So Mm -hmm. there's, there's our three steps around forgiveness. What is my result from doing these three things? What, what do I get from forgiving someone who basically doesn't deserve it? Well, you know, that's freedom. I mean, well, forgiveness is not, it's not, it's really when you give it away freely is when you get the best out of it. Mm. You know, when, when you hold it, like it's some rich thing that you have to wait to bestow upon somebody that's worthy. Uh, it's yeah. never going to happen. It's yeah, never going to happen. Yeah. Cause we're really just passing on what we've received. Right. Exactly. And exactly. God in Christ forgives us. And so we're, right. we're a conduit mm-hmm. for that forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses as, as we, we as as, uh, uh, man, I highlight that in my book too. I said, so many people forget that as we part. I, I know, I know. There's a relationship <laughs> between what we receive and what we act on, right? Is so, as we forgive. That's right. Like, so yeah. if you're, you know, if you're not putting those two and two together, people, I mean, you got to go look in the mirror, you know, it's, it's, you're forgiven as you forgive. And that's what it talks about later in the Bible. It talks about, um, tormentors. Like sometimes you, you're in your own mm-hmm. torment because you're not yeah. forgiving people. You're oh. a bitter, angry person and nobody yeah. wants to be around a bigger, angry, negative person. Mm-mm. I mean, they just no. don't. No. And I no. know I, I'm, I, I moved out of Mississippi to get away from bitter, angry people. <laughs> <laughs> now, not all people in Mississippi. That's are that true. Way, That's true. I we love have people y'all. I listening love in Mississippi right now. I, I have family who used to live in Mississippi. Oh, they did used to live in Mississippi. Wonder if it's the same reason you moved out. <laughs> I'm teasing them. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I love Mississippi. But yeah. So I think that that I think that when somebody has to say it's the best for, forgiveness is for you. So many times, so many times we don't, um, we don't see the benefit to ourselves because we're in, we're in first person, right? When people say, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees. Well, how come that is? Well, because they're up on the cliff looking down at the forest and Uh they see all this potential around you, but yet you can't see it. Why? Because you're in the forest, right? You know, you're in it. And so that's, that's what I'm saying is that, Mm -hmm. you know, when you hold on, 
to, to bitterness and anger and, and unforgiveness and resentment, it just plagues you. And it what happens is like it cancer. eats you alive like a cancer. Exactly. It eats you alive. And it, what happens is you end up lashing out and hurting the people you love the most, mm. your spouse, mm. your children, mm-hmm. uh, your parents, you know, whoever that might be in your life, you end mm-hmm. up hurting them. Mm. And, and gosh, you know, then, then you're just looking back on your life on regret, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so, and so often so, committing the same sins that the perpetrator committed against you, right? Exactly. So you're exactly. passing on what you received instead shifting that for forgiveness. So forgiveness is not something I bestow. It's something I receive. And then it's something that heals me from the exactly. inside out as mm-hmm. opposed to, I mean, it certainly blesses the other person. You blessed your dad for giving him. Mm-hmm. right no, mm-hmm. no doubt about that but it blessed you also mm-hmm. and when you say forgiveness is for you and trust is for who for them for them talk yeah. about trust is for them well i mean if somebody stole twelve thousand dollars out of your business you're, mm-hmm. you're, you can forgive them yes mm-hmm. you're not going to trust them again in your business are you not absolutely not dollars <laughs> not with twelve thousand i mean not with that with a penny and i mean geez you know so, so i mean that's the that's the thing is that you know, yes, you can forgive that person. Okay. Say they say you were in an abusive relationship okay. and, and, and this person has physically beat you. You're mm-hmm. not going to get your, you can forgive them. Yes. But are you mm-hmm. going to let them around you again? I would hope absolutely not. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It happens. I get it. It happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't trust them. You can forgive them, mm-hmm. but trusting is a different thing. Trusting them is not a sin. You know, mm-hmm. not trusting them is not a sin. Right. That's setting a boundary for yourself. Absolutely. Okay. So I set that boundary and they earn the trust back. They that can was damaged if, in if that you, relationship if, that person, if they choose to, and I yeah. choose to participate. If you choose to participate, yeah, they can earn that trust back. You know, okay. that's, that's, and that's between you and you and God and you and them, hmm. you know? Oh, I get it. So forgiveness is for me and trust is for them. Mm-hmm. And this is why I should forgive, which is the name of Derek Stone's new book. So when you listen to this podcast, it should be out on Kindle now, yes. right? Derek? June, okay. June 1st is the release date for the Kindle version. Okay. So hopefully you're listening to this around June 1st. <laughs> <laughs> if not later, Hey, guess what? It's already in Amazon waiting on you to go get your copy. That's right. It, it's a lot of Derek's story and I absolutely love stories, especially first person stories and just a, a you, you've got a, a glimpse of how powerful this book is today faith positive nation so i don't know about you but it seems like there's always somebody i need to forgive for myself and to give them an opportunity to reestablish trust in our relationship right so uh go get your copy why i should trust by Derek stone Derek, give us a website uh where we can go and learn more about you and the book and this amazing story yeah, you can go to DerekStone.online, and that's spelled D-E-R-E-K-S-T-O-N-E dot online. Uh, there is a bio in, on the homepage, and then there's a pre-order. You can go click on the pre-order link mm-hmm. and, and grab your pre-order copy of, of Why Should I Forgive? And I think it's um, there. All, all my social media um, links are on there as well, so you can. Okay. I'd love to have a conversation with you if you're dealing with something and you mm-hmm. need some steps. Uh, remember, this is a choice. It's a choice you choose to make mm. and, and that, um, that that's where it goes. So I would love to have a ch- yeah. chat with you on Facebook or Instagram or however you want to communicate. I think that'd be really cool to reach out and have conversations with you. And it seems like it, at least in my journey and a lot of people I've coached in their journeys as well, Derek, it, it seems like it's so helpful to have somebody like yourself who's mm-hmm. gone through it. Mm-hmm. to mentor me as I go through it for the first time. So Faith Positive Nation, Derek Stone is the real deal. He means it. So go to DerekStone.online and also go to Amazon. If you're listening to this after June 1st, and pick up your Kindle copy of why I should forgive. Derek, Faith Positive Nation always wants to know from our guest about a favorite Bible verse, Bible passage. There are a few about forgiveness. It seems like uh, what, what's your favorite one, man? I think um, there's a bunch of them, but um, I think that Deuteronomy 30:19 says, this is the day I call heaven and earth as a witness against you, that I've set before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. And he says, oh, that you would choose life, that it, go, it, that it may go well with you and your descendants. Mm. And this is why I say forgiveness, so much of it is a choice, yeah. because one day you'll be held account to the choices that you've made. Yeah. And, 
And, and so much of this uh, forgiveness journey of mine has, it was a choice. Mm. You know, when, when God asked me to forgive my dad, I had to make a choice. Yeah. And, and, and I chose to. Thanks for choosing life. Absolutely. Because had you not chosen to forgive him, you'd have been choosing death for you and your boys. For sure. So uh, thanks for choosing life. I really appreciate that. Once again, the website is DerekStone.online. If you're in the morning commute, evening commute, or walking the dog, Chuck's got uh, DerekStone.online on Derek's page on our website at GetPositive.today. So go there and get that. And there's also a link there to the Amazon Kindle copy of Why I Should Forgive. Derek, man, thank you so much. I really appreciate the the wisdom. I appreciate the authenticity and transparency you brought to your own story. It takes a lot of courage to share the way that you have, especially for us guys. And I really appreciate, appreciate your authenticity and transparency, man. God bless you, your amazing wife, and those two great sons. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.